and welcome to Mike Ferry TV. I have to tell you, I get all these great reports from our technology department, and they're all the same. The number of people watching every week is building and building and building. We're now in the millions of views since we started this little program. It's obviously not, you know, it's not death defying, it's not earth shaking, it's just that seven, eight, 10, 12 minutes you and I talking about how to become more productive. You know what's fun? I always say that if you have a competitor that is watching you carefully and you're good, so you're being watched, they're gonna start doing everything you do. Here's what's great, all of my competitors are now doing a show like this all the time. But here's the catch, I always say, if you steal one idea, you're a thief. You steal a lot of ideas, you're doing research. Let's let them research while you take listings. Okay, I want you to think about this. There are certain factors, and we've talked about this over the last year a lot, that if you add them together, make a strong foundation helping you list property. And some of those factors, you know, they don't sound like key listing points, but the truth is they are key listing points. I wanna go through some with you today because these factors, and I, and I think if you look at it this way, if you look at the spokes in a wheel, you have all the spokes intact and they're all strong, that wheel rolls, smooth, rolls smoothly down the street. Take a couple of the spokes out, you have a problem. What happens to agents, in my opinion, is they, they get motivated, they get enthused, they wanna do it, they're gonna build a good listing inventory, they're gonna become strong listing agents, but then they wanna leave out a step. They wanna leave out a portion. They wanna leave out, oh, I don't like this part of the listing process. Mike, that part isn't good for me, I'm just gonna skip it. Well, you and I both know that a doctor would never skip a procedure. The pilot isn't gonna skip a point in the checklist. The attorney's never gonna skip a witness that could help that particular client. You gotta use every step. So let me go through some of the steps. If you use them, you'll become a better listing agent. Number one, and I've, heard, I've said this time and time again, never take the path of least resistance when you're working every day. You're gonna put in a full day. You're gonna take a few shortcuts now and then. It's, it's, it's human nature, it's normal. But don't take the path of least resistance by doing things that you know at the end of the day did not help you succeed because they were a little bit easier than doing the hard stuff like prospecting. Here's the example. You're driving down the street and you see a for sale by owner sign. You're a good agent. You stop the car, you walk up, you knock on the door. You're dressed professionally. Man or lady answers. You have a few qualifying questions to ask. You get invited into the house. You take a tour of the property. You set an appointment for a day or so later. You go back, you prepare, you take a listing. It sells, you get paid. Wow, wasn't that a beneficial foot on the brakes in front of that house? Answer is yes. Path of least resistance. You see the for sale by owner sign and you accelerate out of the neighborhood as fast as you can. It's like you're afraid they're lurking in the bushes trying to catch you. Trust me, the by owner is not lurking in the bushes, bushes trying to catch you. Why do we drive by for sale by owners? We don't know what to say. Why do we drive by for sale by owner? We don't know what to do. And if you don't know what to say and do, you're taking the path of least resistance. They're not gonna call you, you know that. You're not gonna leave a card in the door and they're gonna call you back and say, come on out and list me. Look at your daily activities. Are you taking a path that avoids the day-to-day -day productive activities you need to be involved in. The second point I wrote down is eliminate the options. You know, I had a great conversation. I guess it would be now probably last Thursday. Century 21 Selling Paradise in Cape Coral, Florida. Bobby Mahan, a great customer, great friend. And we were talking about the fact that if we go back 15, 20 years, and I know a lot of you weren't in the business then. If we go back 15, 20 years, the options for getting a listing, we're limited. Today, they're huge. There's so many things you can do to avoid direct contact with people to try to generate a lead. You're on Facebook. I don't know why you're on Facebook. One of the seminars says, text your way to success. I mean, it's not the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but it ranks in the top one. Text your way to success. Twitter, blog. I mean, folks, these are all options that we have available to us to avoid being rejected and talking to people. In the old days, either we picked up the phone, rotary phone, or we knocked on a door. See, today you have options. And you know what's interesting? Because as human beings, we take the path of least resistance, we many times take an option 
that doesn't lead to high levels of productivity. Avoid the options except those that will help you get a listing or a sale at this time. And then the third thought I wrote down, and you, and you think about it, you know I'm right. Selling real estate is actually simple. It's just not very easy. It's simple. Why? Because in your community, town, neighborhood today, somebody over here has to sell their home. In your community, town, neighborhood today, somebody wants to buy a home. Your job, get in the way. Get in the middle. Interrupt this conversation so you can do your job diligently, do it professionally, help them negotiate, come together, and get paid. Our job is to get in the way all the time. It's not complicated, but here's what I want you to write down. Why is getting in the way such a difficult challenge for you individually? Is it the rejection? Is it not knowing what to say? Is it the concern about, you know, I don't want to bother people? I hear all this nonsense all the time. Our job is to get in the way. Selling real estate is simple. It's just not easy. I wrote down this thought. Listing property on a daily, weekly, monthly basis always starts with common sense. I had the craziest thing happen. I was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, probably two weeks ago, on a Friday. Yeah, Friday. And it was interesting. I had a young man, I'm 30-ish, well-dressed, walks up at the break, shake hands. He said, you'll never guess what I want to do. I said, you're right. I'll never guess what you want to do. What do you want to do? I want to be a speaker. I said, go ahead. He said, go ahead and what? I said, go ahead and talk. I don't know what to say. Hard to be a speaker. Common sense. Watch. Common sense. Should you follow up on your leads? Yes. Common sense. Should you have a script when you walk in the front door of a house? Yes. Common sense. The sellers always say the same thing. Should we know how to respond? Yes. Common sense. Should we have a schedule we follow each day? Yes. Common sense. I want you to think about this. How much common sense do you really apply to your day-to-day -day business? And are you applying enough common sense to make your day-to-day -day business grow the way it should? Common sense. I wrote down this particular thought. Number five, you can always get a listing out of your database. You know that. Past client centers of influence. If you're following up, if you're doing your job, mailing them four postcards a year, four or five phone calls a year, stirring the pot with your database, past client centers of influence, and or you can talk to any person in the state you live in because that's where you're licensed to get a listing. Which do you do? We find agents every day. I only work my database. I find agents every day. I, I, I only prospect all day long. Do both. Why not? You should be getting about 35 to 40 percent of your annual business out of your database, 50 to 60, 65 percent coming from lead generation and prospecting. The database is a better way to go, but if you work your database only, you limit your productivity because your database isn't big enough to support the amount of business you're capable of doing. And then I wrote down next, we have to remember if we're going to list property, we are in the people, communication, and image business. Period. If, if we're uncomfortable with people, I, I have people say to me, oh, Mike, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not comfortable talking to people. Why did you pick real estate? Mike, I'm a, I'm a bit of an introvert. Okay, why real estate? Get a job in the library. Mike, I, I'm really shy. What are you doing in a business that revolves 100% around people? Folks, get a job working in a cemetery. Nobody's going to reject you and bother you. I mean, you got to think this through. People business, communication. Can you talk to people? Are you comfortable talking to people? Learning scripts, following an outline, knowing what to say, that's communication. And then of course the word image. We are 100% in the image business. And you know, I, I said to Bobby Mahan's group last week, it's so sad that with social media being such a big part of our lives today, which is pathetic in itself, everything we stand for, everything we believe in, is being published to the world all the time. And most of the time, you don't want people to see you in the backyard in your bikini bathing suit, barbecuing with your kids and you're a guy and you're overweight and somebody posts that on Facebook. You don't want that image out there. We're professional salespeople. If you get on an American Airlines flight in Chicago 
and the pilot standing at the door in shorts and a t-shirt. And he has a parachute on his back. You'd be nervous, you'd get off. Wrong image. We are in the image business. Upgrade, upgrade, upgrade your image. But then I wrote down next, probably the hardest part of listing property, accepting the fact that if you do your job every day, you're gonna get listing contracts signed. Isn't that great? Do your job every day, get listing contracts signed. Do your job every day, get listing contracts signed. Do your job every day, get listing contracts signed. Accept that. Now it's hard because of how we were raised, how we grew up, our environment, our family, our friends, our religious training, our education. We've got to change our thinking to accept the fact that you can win at a high level. But then I wrote down this thought for all of us. When I know what to say, I can do what I'm supposed to do. Counter side of that, if I don't know what to say, it's really hard to do what I'm supposed to do. Do you know what to say in all aspects of prospecting lead generation? Do you know what to say in lead follow-up? Do you know what pre-qualifying questions to ask? Do you have a well-scripted, documented listing presentation? Do you have an answer written out for each objection you're going to get? When you do these things, guess what? Selling real estate can be a lot of fun. When you don't do these things, selling real estate is pretty miserable. And what do you do then? You take the path of least resistance, you take the other option, and you put a buyer in your car. When you and I both know the name of the game is always listing property. So if we're going to have a great September, which I'm going to suggest you consider for yourself, if you're going to do something extraordinary in the last part of this year to bolster your business, take these eight points, drill them into your memory, write them all down, watch this again two or three times, read them every morning as affirmations, and let's make it a great, great month if you celebrated the holiday yesterday, because you're probably watching this on Tuesday, not Monday, hope you had a good holiday. And if not, talk to you next Monday. Thanks for today.